I want you to give us the five minute Hesser. So assume that the people watching this program are all amateurs when they want to become better cooks from a technique standpoint. Okay. Not so much from mm -hmm. an ingredient standpoint or a recipe standpoint, but a technique standpoint. Okay. What are the things that you tell people to do? Well, I think the most important thing to do when you're, when you're making a recipe is to actually read the recipe first. I know that's like a God forbid you should do that moment, but in fact that's true. Yeah, it seems yeah. kind of boring, but you know, because uh, you know, you think, well, why well, just go from step one to step two, but you right. really need to do that. The other is to prep all of those ingredients in the ingredient list. Pull every one of them out. If it says chopped, chop them before you start because it's just gonna make your life way easier. So you actually are of the school that when you go through it and you identify the ingredients and it tells you to do certain things beforehand, don't do them as you go, do them all beforehand. That's right. And I mean, recipes are designed for, for exactly that reason. Right. I mean, prep the, means prep. It, yeah, the ingredient, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is I find that um, almost every cook gets really stressed out about finishing a dish, like finishing a bunch of dishes all at once, right? Like that's the most stressful like sort of point about how do you a meal. time it so that you work backwards mm -hmm. and get everything done at the same time? Yeah. yeah. So a chef told me something um, interesting a few years back, um, which was, you don't want to serve hot food <laughs> because you don't. It's too hot to enjoy all the flavors. So you actually need things to cool down a little bit. So it's and okay if it's done 15 minutes ago. Exactly. Minutes ago. And so, and you know, and if you, if you know, if you spend any time in, in Europe, you, you, you'll start noticing that actually you get a lot of things that are kind of room temperature. Right. It was so liberating when he said this to me because I thought, oh, right. Well, you never have super hot food in a restaurant unless it's like not a great restaurant, you know? Mm. And, and so why, uh, why do you need to do that at home? And so it's it immediately kind of lets you off the hook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there one tool one implement in the kitchen that you would say, this is kind of my secret device, the thing that makes me a better cook that people should have? Yeah, I, this is not like any, um, I mean, it's not that uncommon now, but the microplane zester. I feel like it was like the most kind of the, the, say that again, microplane zester. Microplane zester. Yes, which okay. has a great story because it actually is a wood rasp. It was designed you know, as a tool for wood, um, and the uh, the wife of the owner of this tool company w was looking around for her zester and couldn't find one, and so she used it for oranges, and it worked really great. Presumably she cleaned it first. Yes, she did. Yes. <laughs> and it's become this huge hit, but it actually zests better than any tool ever, and it sort of makes lemon zest, like, much more fragrant, and it's very delicate, but it's also really great for Parmesan cheese. Microplane is the brand? Yes. Or microplane... Zester. zester and it looks like a ruler like a metal ruler wow. but it has these tiny little blades of all the things you could have picked you picked that yeah i feel like it's the sort of most transformative design in a utensil or a tool in the past decade at least pretty amazing mm -hmm. so okay so now you've got we have just a little bit of time left so you <coughs> are now on tour with this cookbook as yes. it is just published mm -hmm. but surely you're thinking ahead oh <laughs> so what are you doing next well the next book will be the food 52 cookbook so you, so, you yeah, have so we, a deal already? Oh, us. yeah. So that's actually how we started. We got a book deal, and we used our advance to build the site. And so in fi oh, and we good. did 52 weeks of recipe contests. Right. And those that first batch will go into the first book. And, and it will be all 52? Yeah, it'll actually be like 140 recipes, because we did two contests per week, and then we did wild cards. We right. sort of, you know, sort of layering so when, in lots when, of great when recipes. So when will that be? That'll be in the spring. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. And what was your favorite? I asked you about the cookbook. What was your favorite recipe in the course of that challenge? Oh goodness! Um, gosh, my favorite recipe. That's well, how about so. Just pick one good one. I'm gonna how pick about? one good one. Okay. okay. Um, I would say um, there is a uh, a beef cheek taco recipe, which sounds very exotic, but it's super easy, and you can use yeah. short ribs. You can use any kind of like stewing beef for mm. it, and um, I've made it so many times. And you just you know you just cook beef really slowly. It has a delicious marinade. It's a little spicy. Has a little bit of peanut butter in it. Um, and then you you know you have cilantro on top, and it's just a simple beef cheek taco. So yes. if we go to food52.com, search for beef cheek taco. That's right. You like it? It's Hesser approved. Uh, it is absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. It's uh, fun to talk to you about this stuff. I'm going to go get a microplane zester when I rush out of the studio today. So. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. Good Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Amanda Hesser.
Funding for Overheard with Evan Smith is provided in part by Hilco Partners, Texas Government Affairs Consultancy and its global healthcare consulting business unit, Hilco Health. And by the Matson McHale Foundation in support of public television. And also by MFI Foundation, improving the quality of life within our community. And also by the Alice Kleberg Reynolds Foundation. And viewers like you, thank you.